All right, pairing up Luis with the Sal. <clears throat> Let's take you on to uh, your leg lift. Problem is with the Sal's video, we can't do timing because it's slow motion. It's the only thing I don't like about this video. So <clears throat> I won't be able to get to the timing with you. Actually, I'll just time it out and I'll tell you where he more than likely is. Okay, just looking positionally, like, you know, looking to see who's more inside that drive leg. Okay. Can't get it on the other side of your foot. Okay. So you can see, you're even in your lift, you're wanting to lift and put your leg on the back side of the rubber. We've got to be careful with that because then we get caught up in those kind of balance positions. Well, nothing's really happening. We're not going anywhere. This game is, you know, this skill is speed. It's all about speed and velocity. You know, of course, it's important how we organize our body, but we want to make sure we're moving early and, and trying to be as quick as we can down the mound. So being careful, you know, you're, you're, it's going to be typical. It's going to be typical to see these high-velocity pitchers uh, moving early. That's usually what I find in doing all these analyses. They tend to move very early. Okay. Let's take you into your load. Okay, once again, you put the leg down. We didn't really go much, or we didn't really move that much forward by the time your lift leg came down. Okay. So to me, it's kind of like you're working in a slide step. If you're just going to lift up and swing it back, and then it's just going to come back down, you know, there might be a little bit of, there obviously is some assistance to that movement in there, but not as effective as, as your lift leg was coming down, you're moving your hips down the mound and you're starting to accelerate down the mound. So like watch a Sal, by the time his leg gets to that same place, he's that extended leg, leg lifter. So look, by the time he gets to that place, he's, he's already a good, maybe, you know, maybe a foot ahead of you with his hips, right? All right, so let's take you to your load where that drive leg is ready to extend. So you can see here, by the time it gets linear, as opposed to a Sal's when his gets linear, he's he's completely closed off with his front foot. He, you're you're starting to almost, or you're almost in full rotation. He's got torsion, you don't. So that's what's going to happen. Is if we if we open early, there's only a few guys. You'll see big leaguers who can do this. They can do that, but at the same time too, they have a Sal's drive leg knee still in torsion still stable. You can see yours is turning down. So that means they have good hip mobility. But if you don't have insane hip mobility where you can turn this foot open completely in a full stride and this leg doesn't even react. See, I can already feel my groin pulling. Then, then you can do that. If not, you starting to open that foot that early is going to start your backside to rotate as well. Okay. So the only other thing is, and this is what tends to be your habits coming into this, is, is you're a little, you're leaning forward right here, and, and a sow's more vertical, okay? And that's because you like to abduct that, horizontally abduct that arm all the way back, kind of aggressively, and then, and then it comes back around more in that kind of uh, sidearm slot. Okay? So, I, you know, be careful with that. I, I like how you load your scap, but don't do it too much with that tilt forward because then it's going to just want to swing back and then swing around, and then you get very rotational, and then you're more upper body than lower body. Another thing is, too, you're obviously, you're, you're obviously starting this too early, because look at Sal. I mean, he's still kind of chilling out. So you're obviously starting the upper body too early, and that's why you, you know, most of our analysis we've seen already, you've been an early trunk rotator, because the, the trunk is just starting too early. So we should still be chilling out, <laughs> um, with, with the throwing arm. Yeah, guys, liking me on Instagram. All right, so let's let's take you through your, through your leg drive. Okay, so what do we see? Do we see a leg drive? What do we see? Just rotation, right? So we just see you moving down the mound. It's a point where you could initiate a leg drive, and you just want to rotate. Okay, there is guys who can throw hard like that. But you got to have ridiculous hip rotation. The hips completely have to swivel all the way around. But the negative to it is 
you're going to be throwing hard, but you're going to be, I mean, you could potentially throw hard, but you're always going to be throwing short. You mean, and you'll be throwing 55 inches or 55 feet from the target or from the plate. And a, and a, a guy who can 3X like a sow and drive, he might be throwing, you know, I've got guys who can throw up to 53, 52 feet from the target. So, you know, if I'm throwing, if we're both throwing 90, then it comes to who's closer to the hitter. So, you know, we're, we're too rotational. It's where we want to not, you know, try to stay closed before front foot strike, even though this, might, this is you close to front foot strike. That's why you're opening. But if you were still closed, then you would initiate a drive, just like a sow here. So, look, he's still closed. He's not going to rotate in the front foot as much as he's going to drive in the front foot. So, he, now he, so he's extending the back knee. Now he opens the front foot as the ankle kicks out of the back, you know, off of the rubber. And then there he is in full extension in the front foot. Okay. And then when he's stabilizing, his hips open. His hips open right there. His shoulders are, are now starting to rotation. So if we look when he cocked, he's pre pretty much hitting front foot strike and moving perfectly into that leg cocking that we talked about. Okay. Let's see, you're hitting front foot. Okay. And you're moving into that leg cocking. Problem is, what's your glove side doing? Look at... So y'all, your arms are cocking correctly, but look at your glove sides. Your glove sides are the problem. What's his glove side doing? Just pretty much staying in line, right? Staying in front of him. Look at you going in the front foot. What's your glove side doing? That's called early trunk rotation. And that's really, really hard on the anterior side of your elbow because when this pulls like that and this thing's like, dude, I still got to get up. Then it starts yanking that back and then we get all that anterior stretch. And that joint really isn't built to go that far back. It's, it's, it's built to go forward all the way and around. It doesn't like going too far back, so we gotta be very careful there. That's where a lot of guys get into shoulder problems and it'll push into elbow problems too. Studies link it to elbow problems. Because that elbow, specifically that low slot there underneath the shoulder, as it comes around, is going to have a lot of excessive torque on it too. So we gotta just clean up your glove side. I really believe though, if you learn to drive that back leg, as opposed to just collapse and rotate, you're going to want to not pull your glove side because you're, you're driving and you start pulling your glove side and things are going to fly open way too early, so you'll be forced to time it better. But just being aware of that, trying to you know, hang the glove like, like we do in all those drills and just kind of tighten this off into your leg drives. That's why I love to do this. You know, slam the, the glove down, it really prevents me from wanting to do that too early, okay? And you'll see a lot of guys do that. My favorite guy is like John Lester. He's very big on that. You know, he's right here, holds it, stays closed, that gets through, and then, and then this tucks and goes. So in all your drills, really, really emphasizing that would be key to prevent that glove side from wanting to go. So let's see when your hips open. Okay, so your hips open right there. Okay, so no hip to shoulder separation. That hip to shoulder separation will occur when you stop pulling the glove side and you initiate an extension or drive through the back side. It'll start to happen because then you're going to have more force through the back and you're going to have later rotation through the front and that's what's going to do it. Okay, so you still get into good external rotation. It shows that your arm is fine with, ex with external rotating. Okay, we just got to fix up the timing of, of how you're rotating your shoulders. Okay. The only issue is, because you didn't get the drive, you don't have the you don't have the front leg extended. You don't get the trunk tilt that the sow is getting. You get the load in the arm, but not in, in good trunk tilt. So if someone's in this kind of trunk tilt with a maximum load, and you're in this kind of trunk tilt with a, with a maximum load, who do you think has more torque in the arm? You know, potentially the guy forward, because that's the angles I look for. When I analyze guys, I'm looking for the full angle to here, not just this angle. I want it all the way around. So you can see a guy who's more forward, so basically the way I measure it is, I take, I take this angle here, okay, say 50, and then I add that to this angle here, which is, you know, 180 basically. So that's 220. Is it 220? 230. It's 230. 
So if I took your angle here, you're supposed to be taking the negative of that. So that's, that's supposed to be taking 30. So technically, it should have been this way. Let's do that again. No, it shouldn't be that way. It should be this way. So 30. And then I take that. So that's 200. Let's do him again. So 40. Say 4175, so that's 215. So 215 to your 200, so he's got 15 degrees of range of motion. So you're losing that 15 in your trunk tilt because you have the same arm load as him. Okay, so that just means you have more range, he has more range of motion of you than you to generate more speed. And, and, and potentially that should put more torque in the arm in that full range of motion too. All right, we watch him in the front foot. He stays extended or gets fully extended in the front foot. Your, your arm rotation looks fine. I mean, I like how it wants to quickly, it moves into internal rotation faster than a sow's. Okay, it just, if we had more forward trunk tail, it would, it would have uncoiled quicker. So some of the speeds that I would do that I can't do with him, let's just look at it. And I'll tell you what typical numbers I see. So, you know, something 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Oh, it's not recording now. It's not much recording. Okay. So that's typical of high velocity pitchers, but they're usually in, you know, you know, a, you know, six feet, you know, well off the rubber in a full stride. You're close, but, but about a foot, foot short. All right, then when your front foot hits, okay, you can't even see that. Okay, so it's 0 0.06. Normally it's 0 0.03 on average. Okay, so you're slow there. Okay, front foot strike. Okay, that's actual, that's actually normal, 0.13, so you're the same there, you're just, your hip rotation is too late. So, you're staying at front foot, that's just telling you, you're, you're closed at front foot, even though your glove side is way open, your shoulder's still closed at front foot. Um, so that's why it's creating the late trunk rotation. Okay, we just have, we're not helping the, we're not helping the hyperangulation the hyperduction because you're pulling too early and your hips are too late, which is not helping the, the separation timing aspects of it, which is big link to ball speed. So just focusing on the concepts of triple extension, you know, driving into front foot, getting more force in front foot, more distance down the mount, and then eliminating that early trunk rotation. That's key for you. Any questions?